to welcome. On deck. There he is, my good friend Permanube at the very beginning of an episode saying hello as I hit Remember the record button. Clonk that follow button. <laughs> it's all right, Perm, welcome in. So here we are picking up at the Baron Light. It's all right, Perm, it's fine. People deserve to know that my good friend Permanube also streams on Twitch. He's a fun guy to hang out with. Um, it, slash perma noob on twitch twitch.tv give him a follow if you're on the live side but in our last episode here we proved the innocence of an of a Karja soldier named conover and that the eclipse is still a thing and also found that there is a woman looking to get all of the lenses from the signal towers and we gave her the two that we had but we are going to push this forward we are going to get the plot moving a little bit on the main story side and see if we can get this embassy underway. We've also obtained our first legendary NG plus weapon in the Ereve's Downfall, which is pretty powerful. We've coiled it so that we have a 90% crit chance, which is pretty awesome. We will see how it performs as compared to Regala's Wrath, which was one of the reasons that I wanted it. Because I use Regala's Wrath a lot for doing stealth hunting. But we're going to restock here and then head in. Hopefully you're having a good day, Perm. We are about three hours into everything today. And we will be posting these in hour-long episodes. You gonna let Regala I live this that. time, or does she that drop off a different stuff. boat? She actually you drops an not. outfit, and yes, I will let her live yes, this time. Yes, sir. Why the long face, my boss? Wish you were heading out there. No, sir. Are you in charge around here? Ah, apologies, no. That would be Commander Nozar. I'm Lawan, the second in command. So, what brings Aloy of the Nora to Baron Light? I'm here for the embassy. I need it to happen so I can head west. And maybe now that Studius Wadis is here, we can finally get things underway. <laughs> yes, the Sun Priest. Walked in practically kicking and screaming behind his escort. Really seems to like his scrolls. But the embassy remains delayed. Commander Nozar has signaled our readiness, but the Tanakh Marshals have yet to sound their horn. <sighs> All right, fine. Let me through the gates then. I have my own business with them. I'm sure you do. But I'm afraid I can't. Commander's orders. Normally, the gates are open for any who dare to venture out. Asaram salvagers, a few especially brazen Karja, but no one's allowed in or out before an embassy. Now we're open. Once the Tanakh have left. That one guard was all smiles in the background there. Tanakh marshals, you'd say. It's an interesting topic. You said something about Tanakh's marshals. Who are they? They're the tribe's elite warriors. Before every embassy, they arrive with a contingent of soldiers from each of their three clans. Then, during the proceedings, they negotiate on behalf of their leader. And by negotiate, I mean stare down our sun priest until they concede. Faiv over here came face to face with them for the first time at the last embassy. <laughs> came back drenched in his own sweat. It was hot that day, sir. <laughs> it was indeed. <laughs> so the marshals are not representatives of any one clan. They are the magistrates and elite warriors under the chief of all three clans, the one that sits above them, but you'll learn more about that as we move forward. So what happens at these embassies, exactly? Mostly trade and negotiation. The Karja offer tribute of food, spices, and gear. In exchange, the Tanath return personal effects taken from Karja soldiers that fell during the Red Raids. This particular embassy, however, is a special case. Because the Tanakh they're handing over some sort of prisoner, right? A soldier named Fashav? Ah, so you've heard. The exchange has got everyone on edge. You never know if an embassy's going to go well until it's practically over. Where is this Commander Nozar, then? If he's the one keeping the gates shut, I'll convince him to open them for me. 
I'll take you to him. But I have to warn you. The commander isn't one to break protocol, especially when he's already high strung. We'll see about that. This way. There's a lot of activity going on around here. The Tanakh tore down this place during the Red Raids. Two years of labor, and we still have a long way to go. The work stoppage and chain scrape nearly halted our rebuilding efforts. But I hear a certain Nora got them back to work. I was just helping out. Yes, well, I'm sure Alvin was thrilled. He wasn't. Stand aside, soldier. Sir? There's the commander. Better brace yourself. And good luck. Why the sun? How are we to hold an embassy with a tribe that can't even govern their own people? What more can you expect from barbarians? <clears throat> ah. Aloy, was it? Yes. The one who cleared the valley for you? That Aloy. <laughs> we appreciate your service. At least we are ready for the embassy to begin. Didn't you just give the signal? Both sides must signal readiness. Until the Tanakh sound their horn, we wait. Yea, for as the first shall be cut. Shut up. Why the delay? The Tanakh are a tribe composed of three clans. How many banners do you see? You're just gonna wait? Go find out what's wrong. <sighs> oh, this isn't some forgotten corner of the East where you come from, Dwarf. It's the Forbidden West. If you don't like it, run back to Meridian. File a complaint. The Meridian I saved, you mean? That's right. Nobody walks to the gate until the third clan arrives and the Tanakh horn has sounded. Not even the savior of Meridian. So the choice here is, I'll wait. I have other side quests to do. Or I'm going now. And this is where Aloy has a little bit of a head about herself. Where, yeah, this will lead her to her goal. But she she, she does... She thinks she's got some pretty big britches. Well, thanks. But I've waited long enough. It's time to go. Absolutely not. This embassy depends on diligent adherence to... You shall not! Keep telling yourself that. Approaching on a machine. Varl. Oh, Varl's caught up with us. Open the gates, please. Do not let her through that gate. That is a direct order. Sorry, can't do it. I'm asking nicely. I, I don't know what to do. Hey, Bar. Hi, Aaron. Uh, what's Order happening? I you know the usual. Aloy wants something. People Open try to stand in her way. It's not gonna work. Gates. Oh, that's it. Arrest her. I'd like to see you try. Supporting fire? Yeah, I'm locked and loaded. Hey, nose off. You stupid bastard. You think you got the authority to keep that door shut? in the savior of Meridian's face? What, what do you think Sun King of Vod is gonna do when he hears what you did? Promote you, huh? Let it through, boys. Saving the world. Forget something back in Meridian? Look, Varl. It doesn't matter. I made it just in time. So this tribe that Murad told us about, the Tanakh, we need their permission to go west? Yeah, well I figured it'd be nice if they weren't trying to kill me the whole time. But this embassy hasn't started yet. We're just gonna barge in? 
Just no more politics. No more delays. Oh, well. Now at least you have some backup. I guess I do. We'll see how it goes. So as we look back at Baron Light, you can see it is a fortress facing the Tanakh. And we are approaching what is the demarcation line between Tanakh, or sorry, Karja territory and the beginning of No Man's Land. Oh. That is the line between East and West. Cross it and die. Hold on now. Let's take it easy. None may walk this valley until our signal sounds. That was our accord with the Karja. I'm not Karja. I came here on my own to ask for rite of passage. But they opened the gate for you, did they not? What is the meaning of this violation? Why send a child? Do they want to parley or not? The Karja can't be trusted. This is no. Forget the Karja. This has nothing to do with them. I need to go west to save lives. Maybe even yours. The only lives you can save are your own. By turning back. Now. Hold! She's telling the truth about one thing. She's not Karja. She's a Nora from the Savage East. And if she seeks to save lives, should we not listen? Let me speak to her. One last favor for a fellow marshal before he's taken away. So Fashav, the prisoner, is a marshal. A fearless, red-headed Nora. You must be the so-called savior of Meridian. Just Aloy. I am unyielding Fashav. Once of the Karja High Command, last of the Army of the Setting Sun. You're Fashav. Avad gave me a message for you. That he waits for you in Meridian, where you belong. Hmm. <laughs> Avad always was polite. Now I'm even more curious about you knowing that you have the confidence of the Sun King. But such an association with the Karja could work against you here. As it often has with me. As you can see. Tensions are high. This embassy is a delicate affair. They're about to return me to the Sundom, a gesture that might help soothe painful grievances. And now you arrive, unheralded. I'm not here to cause trouble. I just need to go west. So you say. I might be able to help, but I need to know why. Along with some assurance that I won't So here is Fashav, a very interesting character. He was taken prisoner during the Red Raids, which he sought, he joined and then sought to help rein in the excesses of. But now he is dressed as a Tanakh and is titled Marshal. I've never seen markings like those on a Karja before. The Karja see ink is decoration. But the Tanakh, it is much more. A litany of deeds. A record of vanquished enemies. Looks like you vanquished quite a few. I've fought my share of battles. But I feel that my life, like my markings, is only half complete. This side shows my martial deeds. Before I die, I'd like to see the other half marked with the laurels of peace. How did you come to be among the Tanakh? It's quite a story, but not a quick one. Though I suppose neither of us is going anywhere before the embassy begins. Are you sure you want to hear it? It's a good story. I guess we have time. Very well. I marched with Sun King Jaran's raiders when they came west, hoping to moderate their worst impulses. I failed, of course. They 
committed unspeakable atrocities, stirring the Tanakh into action. When the clans overran our forward encampment at Cinnabar Sands, I stayed behind to help the last stragglers evacuate. I was taken prisoner. I didn't make it easy for my captors, mind you. <laughs> and they paid me back in kind on the journey to their capital. I lost so much blood on the way that I was white as a corpse when they threw me before Chief Hikaro. I thought I was dead for sure, so I resorted to desperate measures. Chief Hikaro is the chief over all three clans. So when you met the Tanakh chief, you did something desperate. Now, I'd kept my ears open as the Tanakh dragged me along, and I heard mutterings about a kind of trial by combat that they revere. So, when they flung me at Hikaro's feet, I demanded this right, called the Kurut, thinking that by winning I could request a boon, my life or even my freedom. The other Tanakh howled, but Hikaro stared them down. And then his gaze fell upon me. Evidently, he appreciated my ingenuity. He allowed me to participate in the cool route. Little did I know what I was in for. You said the cool route is a Tanakh's trial by combat. Yes. But it is no ordinary trial. It doesn't pit men against each other, at least not directly. Instead, the combatants fight machines in a great arena, and only the strongest survive. Believe me, it is no easy thing to stare down a charging machine while hundreds around you scream for blood. I know more about that than you might think. Do you? Well, then you have my respect. Like you, I lived through it to claim my prize. I had hopes for freedom, but... Well, that wasn't on offer. Only service to the chief. So Aloy is referring to when she was captured by the Eclipse at Sunfall and thrown into the Sunring there and forced to fight unarmed against a behemoth. She used her ingenuity to have the behemoth strike a pillar that was holding a platform above and it dropped her weapons to her. She was able to defeat the behemoth and then Silence rode in uh, as other pharaoh machines came in to kill her. So that's the, I know more about that than you might think, as she just mentioned to Fashav. You wound up serving the Tanakh chief. The winners of the Kul Root must serve the chief as his marshals. You mentioned that word before. What does it mean? The word itself refers to a kind of protective spirit from the ancient past. In practice, marshals are Hikaro's roving lawgivers. Part magistrate, part judge, part executioner. I won my place among their ranks and served as honor demanded, but many Tanakh still spat on the ground when I walked by. But they did, until I started forcing them to the ground to grind their faces in it. I guess that's one way to deal with it. As you may have noticed, violence is the native tongue of the Tanakh. To survive, one must master it. The truth is, though, the Karja speak it too. More than they should. I can't blame the Tanakh for hating them. So then, are you still Karja? Part of me, yes. Always. But there is much to admire about the Tanakh. Especially their chief. I've heard stories about what it was like before his reign. Three clans always at war, constantly slitting each other's throats. Hikaro and the marshals have crafted a delicate peace. And now he looks to the future. Who knows? Maybe that future will include cooperation with the Karja. The Karja talk about Hikaro as if he's a monster. <laughs> the Karja feel compelled to demonize him if only because he swept them from the field. It is true that he is fearsome. When I was first taken before him, I thought he would flay me alive. But he is no bloodthirsty tyrant like the Mad Sun King was. I think that if you were fortunate enough to meet him, as I was, you would find that he only wants the best for his people. I hope you do speak to him. I'm sure you'd interest him. So, that's my story. 
You're the first Easterner to hear it. But not the last. The cards you need to know what I've learned. Yeah. The way you talk about the Tanakh is a lot different than how they do. All right. But you're going home now, Fashav, which, I don't know, seems it was bittersweet. Are you glad to be going back to Meridian? Oh, I'll admit that I wouldn't mind sleeping in a feather bed or sipping wine from the southern vineyards. But I have another goal in mind. As someone who knows the Tanakh and the Karja, I'm in a unique position to advocate for both. If Sun King Avad is amenable, my hope is to establish a lasting peace. The Tanakhs don't seem that peaceful. They're not, as a rule. But these are difficult times. Chief Akaro knows that survival often requires change, even if that change means putting aside centuries of war. All right, well, I need a way to get through to the West, and you seem like you're positioned to help me here, Bashav. You asked why I need rite of passage. I'll tell you, <coughs> but you won't like my answer. Six months ago, the world almost ended in Meridian. That threat still exists. It's getting worse every day, much worse. Calling down storms, poisoning the water, enraging the machines. The source of it all has gone west, and I'm the only one who can stop it. I've seen the signs. And I've heard tales of incredible occurrences in Meridian, an army of demons vanquished by a red-haired champion. So I'm inclined to believe you. The burden of your task is written across your face clearer than any mark of mine. I'll grant you this, to serve as proof of your right to travel into Tanakh lands. A task so important, and it's just the two of you. Take it from one who aspires to be a diplomat. Allies are essential. Chief Akaro knows the West better than anyone. He may be able to help you. He can be intimidating to others, but don't let that deceive you. He is a man of his word. Maybe. If I need him. Your choice. You can find him at his palace, past the mountains to the southwest. Tell him I sent you. And he'll listen to Look! Me. The Sky Clan's banner. One of the best characters in this game. Marshals. It wasn't easy, but I brought the Sky Clan with me. And the commander? Uh no. I could only convince a few. He isn't yet aware we left. We have banners from all three clans. If there are fewer from the Sky Clan, it can't be helped. He's right. Sound the horn. What's going on? Not all Tanakh can stomach the idea of parley with the Kaja. But enough have come for us to begin. Then I'll be on my way. No. The other marshals will not permit it. You wanted safe passage, you have it. After. have opened the gates. Why do you should at least present himself as if he's not a sniveling coward on the walk up? As the sun rises over a land at war, so too can it set over a land at peace. Today is such... Hear me, marshals! You who claim to be Tanakh! Regala. Chief Akaro's biggest mistake. A rival whom he should have killed. You have forgotten that our people were born in blood. The blood of the Karja. 
Instead, you pledge your spears to a chief who conspires with the enemy. Hikaru has betrayed us. The embassy is proof. And all of you marshals are his accomplices. For this, I condemn you to death. You'll need more than toothless threats to intimidate us. Exile. Uh oh. Fighting machines! Where'd they learn to do that? Silence. Fashav! Come with us now, or not at all! Archers! Light them up! That follow button. Come down and fight fair. What a line. What a horribly cheesy Stick line. To cover. Archers on the ridge. That's my Valor Surge. Damn it. Don't stop you. 
Wait, Varl. Shield like that. Better scan it. A lot to unpack here. Turn. Come down here and face me. No, it was an honorable challenge. You've earned your right to do it. Comrades, mark this day. Today you have decimated the marshals, slaughtered the Karja. So begins our war on the Karma. Without me, aren't you? Guess I'm stuck with Aaron for now. Come on, I'll take you back to the fort. It's salvage time, boys. I don't 
like it can take a hit. We should be able to use it to glide. Aloy. We're still trying to sort out this mess. Seems like the Tanakh have a civil war in their hands. That sounds about right. The marshals weren't expecting Regala to attack. And the entire Karja delegation was slain. Those are Vladis, Peshav, a massacre. What will you do now? I have to head west. Hopefully this rite of passage is still good. For what I'm after, I'll cross all of Tanakh's territory if I have to. Then you have a long road ahead of you. This is only the threshold of the Forbidden West. The Tanakh's true domain lies over the mountains that border Plainsong, home of the Utaru tribe. This isn't Tanakh's territory? All that out there? That's no man's land. It was supposed to be neutral ground, though obviously this Regala ignored that. Her rebels approached from the north with all those machines they were riding. They must have made camp up that way. The rebels were riding bristlebacks. And there were bristlebacks in the Daunt. Are you saying the rebels let them into the Daunt? How would that even be possible? I don't know. But it's worth looking into. While you're at it, there were a number of Karja and Asuram who went out there before the gates were shut for the embassy. Maybe you could check in on them. See if they're all right. I can keep an eye out. Is there a tall neck somewhere nearby? A tall neck? There's that one, over there, near the Utara border, but why... It's, uh, it's hard to explain. It'll help me get the lay of the land. If you say so. Is there anything else I can tell you before you go? <coughs> Excuse me, so... There's a lot to unpack here. The... Embassy obviously failed. Fashav is dead. The commander of Baron Light is dead. Studius Wadis is dead. Most of the marshals are dead. You did see one lose his arm but survive. And uh, we'll leave his name a secret for now, but you will see him again. Aloy has the rite of passage from Fashav, but she doesn't know if it's good or not anymore as she tr attempts to transition to the Forbidden West. But then they were attacked by someone named Regala. So we'll start there. Fashav called Regala a rival. Someone that Tanakh's chief should have killed. <laughs> yeah, I reckon he should have. She's obviously a huge threat. Her attack was coordinated and precise. Until you got in her way, that is. They knew the lay of the land. And they knew Fashav was going to be handed over at the embassy. If the Tanakh weren't expecting her, she must have spent months gathering an army in secret. They had to have made camp nearby. Somewhere they could lie low until the perfect moment to strike. Alright. So, Fashav. Now that he's dead, it's still a very interesting character if you're looking to his backstory. About Fashav. <sighs> the man was taken captive by the Tanakh. Survived for years out in the West, only to die just short of the Sundom. It's a cruel end for a good soldier. There was more he wanted to do. He spoke of advocating for lasting peace between the Karja and Tanakh. Too late for that now. What will happen to him? His body will be carried back to Meridian. As a cousin of the Sun King, he will be accorded official rights and buried with honor. No soldier could ask for more. It's too bad about Nazar and Vladis. At least Nozar went down fighting. As for the Sun Priest, well, no one deserves to go out that way. I'll make sure they're given proper funeral rites. It's the least I can do. So what do you think the Karja are going to do after they've been, you know, ambushed here? Do you think the Karja will take action against Regala? Seems like you'd have common ground with the Tanakhth. An expedition of the Karja army into the west could be taken as the start of another invasion. Sun King Avad won't risk it. That said, we can't allow ourselves to be caught unaware by an attack like that again.
So he mentioned that this is no man's land. That is technically not Tanakh territory. This area is no man's land. That it is. The Tanakh used to attack anyone past Baron Light on sight, but after Avad overthrew the Mad Sun King, he reached out to the other tribes to offer reconciliation. The Tanakh agreed to a neutral border zone as part of the peace talks. Karja and Asaram have been striking out into the area ever since. But now, it seems like Regala and her rebel army have moved in. Well, I'd never call No Man's Land safe, even in the best of times. The ancient ruins of the Southwest are a testament to that. Remnants of some forgotten war. And then he mentioned that the Tanakh lands border the, border the mountains on the other side of Plainsong, which is where the Ataru tribe is. You mentioned the Utaru tribe. Their lands are between here and the Tanakh further west? That's right. Plainsong is their home. They're a peaceful bunch, at least compared to the Tanakh. More taken to farming than fighting. It's hard to imagine a bunch of farmers surviving in the Forbidden West. Make no mistake, they have a fierceness all their own. When the Karja were pushed back during the Red Raids, their warriors chased ours through the burning fields of Plainsong. The Sun King has made several overtures of peace to them as well, but so far, they've declined. If they're so peaceful, why decline? Don't know. I heard they have their own troubles to deal with. Something about a food shortage. You'd think that'd make them open to trade, but... No. They just want to be left alone. And the Tanakh. You said the Tanakh lands are far to the west. What can I expect to find between here and there? Well, as I mentioned, you've got a stretch of wilderness known as No Man's Land, and then New Taru Farmlands. Past that are the Tanakh. Their territory is split into three clans. Desert, Lowland, and Sky. Right. I saw their banners at the embassy. The Desert Clan is closest. Ooh, vicious lot. Where everyone else sees an inhospitable wasteland, they see a challenge to dominate. Somewhere beyond the desert is the tribe's capital and the territories of the other two clans. You don't sound certain. I've only heard the stories. During the Red Raids, the Karja army tried to push into Tanakh territory. But the United Clans rose up against them, forced them all the way back to the Daunt. So no one except the Tanakh really know what's beyond the desert? <laughs> Maybe the scholars do, back in Meridian. All those scrolls have to be filled with something, right? You said there were others who went out when the gates were open before. Like, who? Well, in addition to the salvagers that just went through, there were a couple of other parties of Osirum Delvers. Even saw two Karja scholars trekking southwest with an Osirum crew. Not sure if they're exceptionally brave or just foolhardy. I need to be on my way. Then I wish you luck. The gates will always be open to you should you wish to return. And don't worry about your friends. We'll get them patched up. I appreciate it. Sun, watch over you, Aloy. I hope you find what you're looking for. Two champions tokens brings us to three. There's a lot of stuff on the ground here to pick up, which we're going to spend the time to do. And I believe our first act will be to head north and see about where these rebels are building up the supply of machines. A whole new frontier to explore. The coordinates from the spire should lead to silence in Hades. And just maybe... Backup of Gaia. Yes, but that there. does the blight, the storms, remain machine writers. our objective. But I'll have to push through it all. Find a way to fix the world. Like Elizabeth would. And there you see Aloy and her, I would say, the woman who led the ambush, Regala. Misguided connection to Elizabeth at times. There's only one other person who has that kind of knowledge. 
Silence. What's his angle? Why help to knock the rebels? A lot of parts in the ground. We did pretty well in those fights. <coughs> Excuse me. And to Rocket's comment in chat, yeah, the neutral zone is exactly what it would be like in Star Trek, where it's this area that neither party is supposed to go into. Except the Tanakh seem to be able to come all the way to this end of it, which is interesting. All right, so let's have a look at our quest here. We have the main quest, which is following silence. Side quest, the Bristlebacks, which means we should be going to a camp north of Barren Light looking for that. I think that's where we'll go first. And then there is completing the investigation into the Eclipse. We're going to do both of those things before we go after silence because they're, they're pretty imperative. We don't have any side jobs or anything left to do, so we will target that one first by making well. our way there. It's about tree fitting. So, I think we're pretty good here. A couple more people to loot, just to make sure we get their shards. Humans tend to only drop coils and shards. One more up here. All right. Into the no man's land of the Forbidden West. Let's have a look at our map, see where it goes. So we could walk up to this fire straight up ahead of us down the road here, save, and then continue to proceed. Regala, by the way, is voiced by Angela Bassett, for those who felt that voice was familiar. Here you see the temporary shelters that each of the Tanoth clans have at the edge of No Man's Land. And in the standard game, this is where they would say, what a great time to try to use the shield wing, which we're going to do right now. Just about any cliff now. Get out of that blight, though. And we find Karuf's Salvage, salvage Unlimited. Looks like something's going on. Yeah, it does just need a propeller, and she would have it made on the shield wing. Data point scroll a hastily written report written in rough glyphs. Okay. Went to plain song like you asked and turned up the charm, so here's my report on the proposed trade deal with the Otaru. Won't work. First of all, these people dislike outsiders and deeply distrust anything related to the Karja. Can't blame them there, but that means the alliance with the Sun King of Odd puts us at a serious disadvantage. I thought it'd be smart to profile us as Osram, us Osram as friendlier than their barbaric neighbors in the clan lands, but that didn't sit very well. I guess they have some kind of truce going on that we don't know about with the Tanakh. Bottom line, the Utaro consider us less trustworthy than the Tanakh. Imagine that. Second, to put it bluntly, the Utaro are weird. They're extremely protective of anything that's considered alive, and that includes the local hops you want so badly. To them, it's not just a crop, it's sacred or something. The idea of putting some in your grubby little hands disgusted them. Third and most importantly, they're starving. The Blade is attacking their crops, and most of them won't eat meat. They wouldn't, they wouldn't hand over what little grain they have for all the cogs in the claim. As you probably can tell by now, the visit didn't go very well. Haven't seen that many frowns since my cousin ran off with a Karja. I tried introducing them to Mainspring Ale to smooth things over, but they weren't interested. You know what they drink? Leaf infusions. That's just... dirt water. It's fair. It is just dirt water.
All right. So here are the salvage contracts. There's another piece of lore here. Here's Karuf. And then here is Lorend. You think I'm worried about the other crews? I've got an eye for quality salvage. They don't. Data point. A journal full of precise, careful glyphs. Done with delving. We took payment for the haul. I got more in one sale than in the last four delves combined, and the machines are endless. For every one we turn in, turn to scrap, another springs up in its place. No worries about us running short of salvage. And then, and thank the fires of the forge for that. I was getting too stiff for delving. The climbs, the crouching, the crowbarring, even with the knee armor I invented. It was all too much for these old bones. Not to mention the competition. Ever since those damned Shadow Carja found weapons in the ruins, every bandit and ruffian seems to be seems to think they'll find something that'll make them invincible. If a fall or a mistake with a machine doesn't kill you, those looters will. The ruins used to be quiet and empty, special places. Now people treat them like storehouses. I guess the times have just moved past me. So I put my shards into the scrap camp. There will always be younger hunters, but the skills I got in the delve have taught me how to cover up machines in a way that'll get me the best price. Should keep my belly full until it's time to head back to the claim and retire. Unsigned. So we have Karuf here, who we can't talk to, and Lorend, who obviously wants to talk to us. If it isn't the savior of Meridian, and of my very own operation. Laren, say hello. Hello, nice to meet you. You know, if it weren't for this one, I probably wouldn't be standing here right now. Oh, nasty business. What the Tanakh did back at the embassy. But everyone in Baron Light is thankful you drove them off. So this is your salvage operation. You won't find a better place to trade machine parts in the West. And soon we'll be trading in more than just that. For too long, the West has been, well, forbidden. Dangerous. But... What if I told you we could make an armor so tough, so infallible, that you'd never have to worry about survival out here again? I'd be curious to take a look at it. Of course you would. <laughs> and that's why I've asked my most talented salvagers to find what they need to make that armor. Each of them will present their work to me. The best protection will go on sale to hunters, just like you. Lucky me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some business to attend to back in Chain Scrape. Larand can take care of you while I'm gone. Can't wait to see what you come up with, my boy. Leave it to me. It'll blow all the others out of the forge. You have got to help me. What are you talking about? The armor. I made a dozen versions of it, but none of them were good enough. And there are other crews further west. If they make better armor than mine, I can kiss that keg full of shards goodbye. So you get a prize if Karif picks your armor? A big one. And I finally have the perfect design. I just need the right parts, and fast. So maybe you'd be willing to pick up a contract and get them for me? What would I be looking for? Shell walker containers. Their plating's made to withstand a lot of damage. It'll make the perfect armor. I know it. I think I can handle that. Ah, oh, thank the forge. All right. We scouted out a herd near here. Here's the contract. It'll tell you everything you need to know. You take the machines down. My people will pick up the containers. I'll give this a closer look later. Thanks. Counting on you, Aloy. So... We are not going to go running at those contracts because I already have the armor they produce from the first run through. So we are not running at the convoy ambush. We are still going to go back to the bristlebacks. And um, Larend here doesn't really need them as soon as possible, like he is saying. You can come back at any time and do them. Aloha, Mr. Kays. How you doing today, my friend? It's 
So we will make our way to this machine camp. At least the one we think is here. Some kind of outpost. Depends. That might be where Regal is keeping her machines. I need to find a way to get in there. I can scan the area to see what I'm up against. And tag any rebels or machines in my focus to keep track of them. It's weak against shock. There's really not a great way to take the, take on this camp without alerting everybody that you're here. This is the one I find very difficult to stealth. Is that a guy up there? That is not what I wanted to do. This guy I want dead. Those guys didn't even notice that thing just went boom. Well, we got both of them without there being an alarm gone. Thank you, 90% critical. Stupid powerful, this new bow. Another charger over there. Two of them. Remember to clonk that follow button. So OP, I want it. Yep. The drawbridge. Might be my way across. I think that's everybody. There's probably one straggler floating around that I've missed. Look, I know what the bridge does. We got stuff to loot down here, Aloy. Maybe. Straggler may be more inside still, which is fine. I just want to get all the parts for the things we just took out.
You reuse downfall. Very powerful. I am the Cartman. Welcome in. Indeed. Especially because I've coiled it to 90% crit chance. And it's max upgraded. All right, now we'll go up to this drawbridge that Aloy is curious about, and we are too. Because if you remember, these rebels were riding bristlebacks. And how did the bristlebacks get into the daunt? That's one half of the bridge. How to drop the other side. Bridges down. Here we are. the tunnel, which must have collapsed as they ran further in. What if Olven's explosives created the sinkhole? I should head back to Chainscrape to let Javad know. Indeed, we should go back to Chainscrape and let Javad know. So in the effort of time, because we are nearing the end of today's live stream and this episode's recording, we are going to fast travel back to Chainscrape to resolve this storyline with Javad and Olvid. And then, in our next episode, we will pick up our work in the no-man's land of the Forbidden West. So here we go. So let's go talk to Javad. And see what happens now to our man Ulvid. So, you've returned from the west. Any luck? The Bristlebacks were being penned by Tanakh rebels on the other side of the mountains. Ulvin's explosives opened up a sinkhole, dropping them into the tunnels. Which they followed to the mine and out into the Daunt. Right. Aside from the rebels, if anyone is to blame for the Bristlebacks, it's Ulvin. Radiant beams of the sun. And all this time he was pointing the finger at us. <clears throat> Bring Olvent here. Petra, too. Summoned like a blasted ale winch. You best be meaning to put pen to parchment. What? Why is she here? I live here too, Lugnut. <laughs> so what's this about? <clears throat> Thanks to the Savior, the sun has shown the truth on the Bristleback incursion. Tanakh the rebels were keeping pens of machines on the other side of the mountains. A sinkhole swallowed them, releasing them into the underground tunnels that led east and out into the Daunt. So it was an accident. But let us not forget that it was the Karja... I'm not done. The sinkhole only formed due to your unauthorized blasting in the southern mine, Ulvent. You are responsible for the machine rampage, the workers we lost, the destruction the Bristlebacks caused. 
all of it. My dear magistrate, has your precious son baked your senses? I would never give such an order without first consulting you. <laughs> uh, evidence says otherwise. Aloy found the shipping manifest in the mine. You skirted the laws of the Sundom Ulvent. All for a few extra shards. And you almost drowned your other miners. And sent that oversized tool over there to intimidate a bunch of refugees. I... I demand an official investigation. I won't be the victim of some Karja scheme. Certainly. We'll conduct a thorough inquest into everything. The bristlebacks, the mine, the refugees. Every business deal you ever put your name to. Well, that... That's not necessary, is it? What if I just return to the claim? <laughs> oh, well, that would save the Crown the cost. Of course. I'll be on my way as soon as I wrap up some previous commitments, tie up some loose ends. After all, the welfare of Chainscrape's people in a transition like nope, this... No, you're leaving right now. Chainscrape will be just fine. You think she can run this scorched out forge dump? Ha! Knock yourself out. Get out! Oh, no. Don't want you! No. Don't need you! Don't want all that! Get off me! Mud looks good on you, Alvind. It does indeed. <laughs> As the sun burns away, Shadow. Mm. Thank you for that, Aloy. Oh, he had it coming. Here, please accept this token of gratitude. You've done the Sundom and my sanity a great service. And I believe we have some matters to discuss. Guess we do. Not the most pleasant boots to fill, but I'll wear them. All thanks to you, Flame Hair. So the Bristlebacks is done, which gives us five total champions tokens Chains in pocket. Be better off with almost to the point of getting the halfway to the point of getting the second, the second of our NG plus weapons. But for the sake of the progression of the narrative, we're going to travel back out to that camp that had the salvage contracts and. We'll pick things up there as we travel from here north. I am back, but I don't have any of your stuff, I don't think. I'm not willing to give it to you yet anyway. So here is where we will end things for the day. And if you've enjoyed this, <clears throat> give us a follow here on Twitch. Don't forget that the episodes are broken up into one-hour segments of our live gameplay on YouTube so that if you miss something, you miss some conversation of lore. Thank you very much there, Laren. We're talking here. But you can always... Uh, Pick it up on YouTube if you miss something. Uh, those episodes will trickle out onto the feed. There's a playlist there for that as well. So thank you all for being here today. Thanks for hanging out. Um, we're going to go ahead and bring the recording of this final episode of the day to a close. And hopefully we'll see you for the next one there.